Oh my God. Yeah, that's right. It's a figure update. And not just a figure update. I know this has been long overdue. I know it's been overdue, but this is like figure update the movie. You know, I'm always honest when I come here and I tell you, you know, oh, this month, not so good. Oh, that you know, oh, this stuff, not that great this month. No, this one, this figure update is straight up nasty. This figure update is on a level few will be able to comprehend. You're going to see figures just in a, in a spiritual state of Nirvana, and you, you just won't believe it. When this video is over, the only words you'll be able to say to yourself is, I don't believe it. What do I, where do I go now? And you might even close down your YouTube account. You might um, stop visiting the site because you won't believe... Anything else, you know, nothing else will ever be as comprehensive or as provocative or as just transcendent as what you're about to see. So this figure update just in every way, this might be the best figure update. I'll say that right now. Um, we, we did a little anime expo this summer, uh, which is always where I get a ton of figures and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of stuff came out around that time, but I kept it conservative because I knew Comic-Con was going to be bad this year. There was a lot of shit going on at Comic-Con. And uh, so I, you know, I, I stayed, I laid low and then boom, I was right. So much good stuff at Comic-Con, um, but a lot of stuff in between too. So let's just get to it. Let's not dilly dally around or waste any of your time. Uh, by the way, you're probably asking, you know, it's summer. You just said you're at Comic-Con Anime Expo. You're in the middle of summer in California. Why, the, why are you wearing a jacket and a hoodie and all that stuff? Because I keep it icy in my home. I keep it freezy. I uh, keep those ice cubes on my tongue all the time. And I keep that AC running. I, keep, I like to see my own breath in my home. Um, you know, so that's the way I do it. Um you know that that that's just it. that's my style if you're not into that style i'm sorry if you like to roast in the sun um no i'm actually very lucky to have ac a lot of my friends at this time do not um and uh i count my blessings because man i could not sleep or deal with that why are we still talking about this all right anyway uh let's do this so we're gonna go uh pcc you may be wondering what does that stands for what, is it, what does that stand for? I'm just pluralizing words nonstop. It stands for pre-Comic-Con. It's a whole different era. Um, basically, these came out around Anime Expo. To, oh, you know what? I'm, we're going to start weak. We're going to start a little weak. Um, you know, and build up the tolerance. Um, these finally came out. So, Bandai was putting out uh, Power Rangers Zeo figures. Well, they were putting out Legacy figures basically uh their legacy uh assortment of um all the past power rangers teams like they were going to release every ranger every team um obviously we know that is not happening because now bandai has lost the rights to power rangers and hasbro is going to get it but for right now they're just i they basically are trying to f finish up the teams they already started so uh they had been releasing uh Zeo Rangers, I think I already showed these in past videos, but the uh, this was the team for Power Rangers Zeo. I don't remember if I showed these or not. I think I probably did. Um, you could tell Bandai's got a foot out the door because they made the Gold Ranger out of like, it looks like he's made out of Werther's original. Like he's not, it's not even like really gold. I mean, it actually looks okay on camera there, but it just kind of looks like butterscotch. You know what I'm saying? Does that do it focus on that? Anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. But anyway, regardless, uh, those have been coming out. Everyone was wondering, are the girls going to come out? Because Bandai has kind of uh, slowed down on doing the, 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 the female characters. And I think a lot of people are upset by that. But it's this weird catch-22 because when they pack and ship out 
as many female figures as the guy figures. They just sit on the shelves forever. But at the same time, if they don't make them, it comes off like really bad. Like, why would you not do that? You know, so it's kind of a uh, tricky and I guess they had a lot of difficulty with this line in, in, in getting the right amount of girls out there. It really sucks. Um, but their solution was basically, we're going to do the female Zeo Ranger characters, but they're going to be GameStop exclusive. Like, if you pre-ordered them, you get them, and that's it. Which is weird to think about, and it was not advertised super well, so I don't know how many people know you could do that. But anyway, so there's the pink Zeo Ranger right there. And you could see right there in the corner, uh, ga only at GameStop. And I guess they must have known Toys R Us is gone. Cool, which, by the way, Toys R Us is gone. Like, this is heartbreaking. Like, most of these stores that go by the wayside, I'm like, nah, all right. We don't need you anymore, Circuit City. But, man, Toys R Us, that, that's, that's some rough stuff. So, this probably would have been a Toys R Us exclusive, I can imagine. But... It's not now. It's a GameStop exclusive. I'd rather go to Toys R Us than GameStop and be honest. But anyway, uh, Pink Ranger. Uh, each one comes with a you know a piece of a Megazord. You know, like here's an arm, and then you can put them all. If you get all the Zeo Rangers, you can put them together and make the Zeo Megazord, which I have not done yet. But I heard it doesn't look good. Anyway, uh, there's the Pink Ranger. There's Yella um, right there. And, uh, you know, what's kind of cool is they all have this, all the Power Rangers stuff you're about to see, they all have this 25th anniversary emblem. You've got the power, um, which I hope is not referencing that shitty song. You've got the power, or is it, I got the power, it's I got the power. So maybe it's not. Um, I thought it was so lame. Even when I was a kid, when I saw the, the first Power Rangers movie in 95, can you believe that? I remember thinking it was lame when they played I got the power at the end because I just thought that is so on the nose like uh, even as a kid I thought that and so when they played it again in the new fucking movie last year I was just like what are we doing okay anyway so that's those all right we're still in the PCC era pre Comic Con um, this stuff came out around Anime Expo time and I thought was cool this one I already opened you gotta look you know Figure Arts is doing God's work with the Star Wars figures. The American Star Wars figures kind of gone by the wayside in my eyes, but Japan keeps doing these Figure Arts that look amazing, and they just finally did. Finally, after all this time, old ass Obi Wan, old Alec Guinness, Obi Wan, and I've opened it up. You could see for yourself. Um, you know, you see a little bit of resemblance. Anyway, um. Is it, is it going to focus on that? Uh, you can see how great the likeness is on that. You know what I mean? Like, God. And the hoodie was optional. You can actually uh, pluck this off, and then he's hoodless. Um, but, man, they, they're they just killing it. You know, super posable. I got them in the pose that I want, so I'm not going to not gonna pose them anymore. But, man, they killed it on, on that. You know, I was waiting for this for a long time. They did every form of... Uh, you and McGregor, you know, as Obi Wan, but they hadn't done you, um, Alan Guinness until right now. The best accessory that this Obi Wan figure comes with, I'll say, I'll tell you right now, I love. It came with this hardened, <laughs> fallen robe that can just sit uh, on the desk or shelf or whatever with your Vader figure. Because I, I got a New Hope Vader a while ago. It's on my desk at work. And now I'm going to put that at his feet so he can kind of like poke at it with his foot, like kind of like he does in the movie. I love that. Darth Vader is this all like powerful, you know, at one with the force guy who can sense whatever, but he has to poke the robe with his foot. I've always loved that. Anyway, killing it with that. In the staying in the Star Wars realm, uh, this is another one I opened, but they did a uh, Nendoroid Princess Leia. And I think this is like one of the cutest figures ever. Now, prove me wrong. I think that is one of the cutest figures ever, and I'll show it to you. I put her in her uh, her little hood there. Look how fucking cute that is. Look how adorable that Princess Leia is. Come on. You're, you, when I held that up, you just went, oh, you made that sound. I heard it. Don't front. 
They also did Nendoroid. This one barely ekes by the Nendoroid name. You know, they're all kind of like that cute kawaii kind of thing. But uh, they did Nendoroid BB-8. Now, come on, guys. All you did was it was a regular-ass BB-8, and you made the eye bigger. That's it. That's that's what they did. But I got to say they did a good job because it's all... What I like is it's all magnetic. Now, I got them doing the, the flame like... Either it was a thumbs up or a or a middle finger. We still don't know, but I got them doing that. But anyway, uh, they made the whole figure magnetic, which is I thought was really cool. So you can kind of pose in however you want. And then he came with like a uh, mound of sand that he's like kind of like rolling through, you know, and you magnetically put that there too. And I thought they did a really good job with that. I thought, you know, I don't really get a lot of BB-8 stuff, but I thought they did a really good uh, job with that. Very cute, very... Well done. Um, are you going to judge me? Sorry, I don't know if I should show this or not. Am I going to get judged for a Funko Pop? People are so fucking cruel. about. No, I get it. I, most of the Funko Pops are gross. And I get that. Every now and then there's one that is like, oh, that's a cool collectible or whatever. But people are so ruthless about it. Um, but... Disney got these. It's a two pack of the. Uh, it's an enchanted tiki room. Um, I believe it is the. Oh shit! Fifty fifth anniversary is that what it is? Of uh, no, what the hell anniversary? Fifty. What anniversary is it? I'm blanking out. I'm on the spot, so I can't do it. But anyway, uh, Pele and the Barker Bird that used to be in front of the attraction. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it's, you know, a, a rare Disney collectible. I had to get it, you know, put your hate in the comments. I get it. Okay. Um, this just came out not that long ago. Um, I love what Mafex, Mafex, Mafex. I don't know the name of this company, but, um, I love what they're doing with Batman because they're not, they're releasing a lot of these superposable, nice Batman figures. Oh, I just noticed something. That's cool. Um, they're doing them, but they're not just doing a Batman. Now, oh, here, Heath Ledger's Joker. Here he is. They're not just doing that. They're doing all the obscure stuff. They're doing Bane with the fur coat on. They're doing um, the the Joker in his when he disguises himself as a policeman. You know, it's not out yet, but without the makeup, you know, um, they're doing um, the more obscure shit that they don't normally make figures of. This is a super nice, nice Japanese figure of Scarecrow. Mafex or Mafex, whatever, Scarecrow. And there he is telling you, don't tell anybody. Don't that, don't tell anyone that I'm wearing a ugly-ass bag on my head. Anyway, um, I don't know if you could see that. I hadn't opened it, but man, they did a great job. The, the likeness is good. The figure looks good. I just now noticed, I didn't realize it comes with a demented uh, dream state Batman head. You know what I mean? Like the freaky nightmare that, that he has when he gets gassed. I didn't know it came with that. So I got to get the Batman figure now. Put that head on it, right? That is so cool. It looks just like Mr. Peaky Blinders himself. All right. So we got that. Hey, real quick, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a thank you to uh, our friend, our good friend, Jared Thorbaum, who uh, around E3 gave me this. Uh, it was an exclusive somewhere, but it's a Prometheus figure where uh, it's one of the engineers, uh, but he's in it's like a hologram of him. So I just want to say thank you to Jared. That was pretty cool. Thank you for giving me that. You know, just a quick shout out. Anyway. Uh, all right. OK, so. Where, oh shit, where is, okay, I'll show you this, this is one that I got, this is one that I got at Anime Expo. A lot of this stuff, by the way, as I continue through this, a lot of this stuff is, was either a really good deal that I got, or uh, given to me, some of this stuff were, were gifts, so I'm just, I'm just doing a disclaimer, some of these things were gifts. Uh, you know, got that digital influencer relationship. So some people are just, they pretty much just bow to one knee and are like, you know, we bow to no one. You know, you ever see the end of Return of the King? Some of these figures were given in that manner. Um, so I want to say thank you to everybody who, who did that. 
Um, this I got at Anime Expo is uh, Frieza, first form Frieza, which I, I don't see cool statues of that much. So they did a really good job. Ban Presto, you're killing it. Um, they uh, put out, at the same time as this, they put out a Perfect Cell figure. And I was looking forward to that, uh, you know, it was a nice Perfect Cell statue, but they made them like lumpy and veiny and shit, and it didn't look good. So, And I got I got Perfect Cell already in, in other figures, but this just looked really cool, I thought. So I thought that was a pretty rad little statue. Put that at, on my desk at work. Um, and then the other nice thing I got at AX. Oh, this is a good one. Speaking of Dragon Ball and speaking of statues. Oh, this is the, uh, manga dimensions, Super Saiyan Goku. I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but if you look, it's colored like cell shaded, like he's like, it's part of the animation. Like, it's painted in a way that it looks like that. Like, 2D cell animation. Isn't that rad? And, you know, it's pretty damn big. You can see for yourself. I mean, even compared to the... Uh, compared to the Frieza one. I mean, look. You thought this one was big. You were wrong. Look at look at that. So, that's one of the coolest things I had to get. I was, you know, I was waiting... I was waiting for Comic-Con on a lot of shit. But I just couldn't resist that. Look at that. Oh. Anyway, I'm looking for the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan one, but I guess, I think it's sold out, like, a long time ago. I can't, I can barely even find these anymore. Like, uh, I think there's some new ones coming out, but I wanted Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Gohan, sorry. Have I been saying Goku this whole time? Gohan. I wanted Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. I haven't got it. All right. Now we're getting into the Comic-Con stuff. Ooh. I just need a minute to kind of soak it in. Comic-Con, man. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, let's just do it. Uh, again, let's start soft. I uh, <laughs> Entertainment Earth always has these, uh, these, like, push puppet things or, like, bobble or whatever their exclusives are. They, they seem to always do one for Twin Peaks, and they're always, like, ten times smaller than people are <laughs> realize. And that same thing happened to me. It looked like they had a, a puppet of the evolution of the arm from the new Twin Peaks. But this thing is, like, tiny. Like, it, like it looked way bigger in their ads and stuff. But whatever. It's only, you know, it's only a few bucks. I think is what they're selling it for. Anyway. All right. Let's just, let's get to the good stuff. What do you say? Uh, over at, let's see, where do I even begin? Over at, uh, Bandai, Tamashii Nations, whatever. They had a lot of exclusives this year. Uh, they had a, like, black and gold, or black and silver, green, whatever, Megazord. That was their big exclusive this year, and, uh, I was not feeling that at all. They've done the black and gold and whatever Megazord so many times through so many different companies. And, um, oh my God, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Damn, cut that out later. Um, they've done the, the recolored Megazord thing so many times. And it, I think it was like 300 bucks or something. Uh, I couldn't, I, I, I didn't even have, even if they gave it to me, I wouldn't, I, I don't have the room for any more Megazord. So that was a no, but they were selling early. This wasn't an exclusive. They were selling early the Soul of Chogokin Dragon Caesar, a.k.a. Dragon Zord here in the States. Look at that. Damn. They were selling it early. This is not out yet. It's not out yet. You may be, you're looking at this video going, how, how do you have it? Well, don't worry. Don't worry. Um... Anyway, unbelievable stuff. Look at that. And uh, combines with the Soul of Jogokin Megazord that came out earlier this year. Or when, when did that come out? Late last year? Whatever. Anyway, they did a great job. This one I actually did open, and you can see for yourself. This thing is heavy as hell. Detail is perfect. Um, 
you know, you could see it's like gold plated and shit. I mean, so Soul of Chogokin, in case you don't know, is where they do a, a certain mecha robot, whatever, and do it perfectly. Like every, it's for the true collector who wants every single little detail represented. And man, did they represent. Oh man. So everything that should be chrome is like chrome plated or whatever. Tail is super posable as it should be. Came with swappable hands so he could do the, like, finger missile thing. So that's cool. Um, again, you know, all, all like, there's, like, die-cast parts throughout the entire thing. So, man, they killed it on that. They really, really, really blew it out of the water on that. So if you want, like, the perfect version of the Dragon Zord, this is the one you want to get. Um, and it was really cool they had it early. So these should be shipping soon, but it's not even out in Japan yet. Can you believe that? I don't know if people realize these were at Comic Con. Like I don't, I don't know how many people picked that up, but damn, dude, they they killed it on that. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so uh, another thing that they uh, uh, they they had a few things early, and I'll show you some more stuff um, that they granted me um, before the Japanese release date. Um, First, well, not first, we just showed the Dragon Zord. But a Dragon Ball one that was there early was uh, good old Master Roshi himself, Kame Senen. Kame Senen Muten Roshi, that's him. Um, and uh, this is one of the figure arts I was looking forward to the most, because I love this character. And uh, they did a really great job. Again, this isn't even out. I don't, maybe, maybe it's out in Japan at this point, but not, not to my knowledge. Anyway, uh, they did a great job. It has all the different poses and, and gestures and uh, facial whatever. You know what I'm saying. Um, what I love is they included this face right here and this gesture, which anybody who's a fan of the show knows that's when he like wants to touch boobs. He does. He That's like, I want to touch some boobs mode. It came with that, which I think is cool. The other figures kind of come with their classic moves and attack, you know, like uh, Goku has, you know, one version of it has like the Kaioken stuff. Krillin comes with the Kienzon. Yamcha comes with like Suki Don, and he comes with the I want to I want to touch some boobs mode. So that's kind of you know kind of representing all the different styles. Um, okay, what else did they have? Okay, this is, now, this was another thing that was there, I, I think early, but uh, this might be out. Maybe this is already out. I don't normally get any Marvel stuff. I don't, I never do. I'm just not, um, you know, I don't hate Marvel, but it's never really been my big thing. Um, you know, I can appreciate it. I, I you know, I, I saw, I, I really liked, I loved Black Panther, and uh, and I honestly, I liked uh, Infinity War that came out this year, so, you know, props. But the reason I liked Infinity War so much is its villain. I'm a big fan of when, whenever they do these godlike villains, you know, I always loved Apocalypse in, in X-Men. Um, and uh, I always have loved Thanos, and uh, so I was stoked that Avengers finally had Thanos in it, in a big way. Um, well, they did SH Figure Arts. Thanos, they got me. They got me. Marvel finally got me. I bought a Marvel thing. So there he is right there from Infinity War. And this one, it's actually, I already kind of started this. But um, it's big. I love that the figure art stuff is uh, scale. I think that's great. Um, here, you can kind of... You can see it for yourself. They did a really good job. Detail is good. He's got the uh, gauntlet. You know, it's got all the individual gems in it, which is tight. Um, I kind of wish. I'm kind of. I don't. I don't think he looks as good without the headpiece. Uh, you know, in the movie, I was kind of just like, oh, put that back on, put that. But uh, I kind of wish the toy. You know, the toy comes with multiple heads. Like, there's another head where he's pissed. Or he's trying to take a shit or something. I don't know. But uh, I was kind of hoping they would include a head with that headpiece. Um, and they didn't do that. But he comes with, uh, you know, different hand gestures with the gauntlet. And, um, you know, whatever. So they did a really good job. And again, super posable. As always, you can 
expect that. What is this? Oh, okay. It has nothing to do with it. All right. Um, but they got me. You know, Marvel, I didn't think they were going to get my collector's dollars. Um, but they did. They got me. Absolutely got me on that one. I got bogarted on that. I can't believe it as I put this back in the box. Um, damn, man. Okay, so what else do we have here? Sorry, I'm just putting that back the way it was, trying to keep it neat. Now, this was an exclusive over at Tamashii Nations. Uh, they did a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito. Vegito Blue, basically, if you want to abbreviate it. But uh, I always like, see, I'm a fan of when an exclusive, like, is real direct about, like, like, they make a big deal out of, you had to be this place at this time to get this. And um, I'm always a fan of that. Because it's hard to get them sometimes, you know, and so you want to, like, show it off. Like, look, I did it, you know. Anyway, so I really am stoked that this has the, actually has the Comic-Con logo on it. And that's what's actually wallpapered in the back. I don't know if you could see that, but that's what's wallpapered in the back of the figure display. So I don't know if I want to take this out of the box. Usually I do, but I kind of like displaying it with all the Comic-Con paraphernalia. But anyway, uh, Vegito makes a return in Dragon Ball Super and then goes blue. Sorry to if that's spoiling it for anybody, but that, you know, it aired a while ago. That's public knowledge at this point. Um, okay, other exclusives they had, you know, I mean, there was no question. I had to get these. Um, SH Figure Arts, exclusive. And I, it kind of blows my mind these were exclusive. The Red Ranger and the Green Ranger, and they are both for the first time in Japanese figure history, I, I think, or or at least figure arts history, whatever, in a in a high quality way, helmetless. So you got uh, Mr. Tommy Oliver himself right there uh, as the Green Ranger, and Mr. Jason Scott himself as the Red Ranger. The likenesses uh, are fine. They're a little weird. They look better in person than they do in photos. But a lot of people were confused why the hell these were exclusive. Uh, you know, and they just put up for solicitation, they just put up a White Ranger. They, uh, Tommy, again, spoiler alert, uh, without the helmet. That's available for the public to buy. Like, you can pre-order it right now on all the different figure sites. Why are Red and Green Rangers con exclusive? Like, those are, uh, like, these would be big sellers at any store. So everyone's kind of surprised by that. Again, it's got the 25th anniversary uh, symbol on there, which is kind of cool. Um, and I like that the background of the packaging actually has Rangers from every era. I don't even know if that comes out on the screen there, but uh, they do. So I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, um, yeah, people were really befuddled by that. Like, uh, you know, you would think the con exclusives would be like uh, Black Ranger, Pink Ranger, Yellow Ranger. You know, even those people would want, but they're a little more obscure. But the red and green, like, the, I don't know. So my my theory is they have a plan with these. Like, they're going to make them more available than that. But anyway, um, so that's it for them and the figure arts and all that stuff. Okay, over. Now, we're still in the Power Rangers realm. Bandai, this is their last year with the Power Rangers license, and so they had all these exclusives and showed, like, look, Bandai has all these Power Rangers exclusives. Isn't that cool? And then at the last minute announced that they were at a bunch of different booths, which, uh, that sucks. As a con-goer trying to get all the exclusives, to have to run to every booth and hope you get one, you know, it, it would have been nice if they were just at one thing. So that was a, kind of a pain in the ass, to be totally honest. But, I got them all. And again, through what means, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, but, but thank you to the people involved, some of the people on the underground. All right. Um, at Bandai's actual booth, the exclusive that they had was kind of the big enchilada of their exclusives. The Gold Ranger Legacy Zeonizer. Um, the Zeonizer Gold Ranger Edition, I should say. 
uh, the Zeonizer in the show was how the Power Rangers Zeo morphed. And um, the Gold Ranger had his own version. Ironically, not in America. Uh, he just used his power staff to morph. He didn't use the morpher, uh, the Zeonizer, whatever. He didn't do it. Um, however, in Japan, in O-Ranger, the Gold Ranger did have an, a, a separate, like a Gold Ranger version of the morpher. Zeonizer, whatever. But anyway, um, they put this in... Anyway, so this is basically from the Japanese version, not the American one, more or less. So anyway... 25th anniversary symbol, you see it there. This slides out. S real slick. Power Rangers Zeo embossed box. It opens up. Take that off. And then you got... Let's see, what do we got? Uh, there it is. The Gold Ranger Zeonizer. And what's different than the regular Zeonizer, you ask? Well, first of all, it's gold, durr. But uh, the uh, the uh, the like the basically the parts of it are uh, fitted to like they're uh, it's all different symbology and all that stuff. Uh, it's got the Gold Rangers like symbol on the like little area right there, and they put in different sounds. You can actually hear, I think it's actually the actor who played Jason. Power. I think that's actually Austin St. John. And then it plays the Gold Ranger theme, you know. Let's see. Plays the whole Gold Ranger theme. I'm going to let that play in the background. Uh, and then the crystal that it comes with is... This is the Gold Ranger crystal. And if even in the American show, he would plug this into the console on the... Pyramidus Zord that he had. You can put that in here. There you go. And that's the idea. Is when you morph, it's supposed to like in there. You know what I mean? It's a little bit, you know, sexy if you ask me. But, you know. Anyway. So you can see the gold there. That's that's the difference. Is the Gold Ranger crystal, the whole thing is gold, the symbols are gold, whatever. Okay, enough of that song. We don't need to hear that song anymore. But anyway, you get the idea. Gold Ranger Zeonizer, I had to get that. And again, this is another thing that a lot of people at home were surprised. Like, it's such a specific thing. A lot of people thought, like, you're not going to sell these to the public, but, um, you know, outside of Comic-Con, outside of this convention that fucking no one can get into. Um, but alas, they're not, apparently. So anyway, put that back in the box. That was the big enchilada at Bandai's booth. They had a bunch of other non-Power Ranger stuff, but I didn't give a shit. Anyway, now at other booths, this was one that I was dying to get. Finally, we're starting to get Psycho Rangers. Psycho Rangers were these evil rangers in um, Power Rangers in Space. They were the coolest villains the show ever had, in my opinion. And what's funny is other countries are starting to get psycho red and psycho blue no one knows if they're you know before bandai's time runs out if they're going to release psycho black it was shown in some photos so hopefully they will but it's looking super likely that they won't have psycho pink and yellow which is bullshit but what is extra ridiculous about it is that as a con exclusive they did psycho silver which wasn't even technically a Psycho Ranger, if you know, and it says on the back, the story, Zane, the Silver Ranger, dressed up like a Psycho Ranger to confuse the other Psycho Rangers. So he's not even a real, It's a. it was a fake. And yet somehow, before we get any of the regular Psycho Rangers here in America, we got the dummy, Silver. So there it is. But the figure is so nice. And this was in the show. He did dress up like a like a, a fake Psycho Ranger, like the Silver Psycho Ranger, to confuse the other Psychos. So uh, that is from the show. It's obscure so much so that I ha I mean I was going nuts over this. Um, comes in this nice slip cover, uh, but anyway, I was super excited about that because that it, again it was in an, at one episode of the show. The Psycho Rangers, oh, they're some of my favorite characters ever. So they did a really nice uh, package for that. This was exclusive at Entertainment Earth, um, but I, I think they're selling 
overstock of it on the Entertainment Earth website, so you might want to check that out if you wanted it. Anyway, uh, now this one I was mixed on because, again, I just want the regular Psycho Rangers. Just give me the regular ones. There was never a green Psycho Ranger. But then Boom Studios, the comic booth, out of nowhere announced, oh, yeah, we got the green Psycho Ranger figure. What the fuck? And the whole time I'm looking at this, I'm like, there wasn't a green Psycho Ranger ever in the show. But I guess it was in the comic, which I have here. It's a character in the comic. And he was, like, the first Psycho Ranger. And, like, in the 60s, they sent him to the moon to, like, open Rita's casket or something. I don't know. I, I haven't read that far. But it sounded crazy. So I was like, okay, I guess I have to get that. So they did a green Psycho Ranger exclusive only to Comic-Con. Comic artwork on the package. And then you can kind of open it up. This one's harder to get out for some reason. But you could see for yourself. Look at that. I mean, regardless of it being canon or not, I guess it comes with like a dagger. Maybe that's in the comic. I don't know. I'm not sure. But still a nice figure. And I do think it's interesting. The other one had the Power Rangers and Space logo at the bottom. And this one's got the Mighty Morphin logo at the bottom. Because it's probably from that era. They're prob they weren't in space yet when this guy showed up. Fuck, I'm fucking this package up. When I was in line, for, first of all, let me just say, I got in line for this, and Boom Comics, or Boom Studios, whatever, like, didn't show up when the hall opened, so, like, all these collectors and stuff were waiting at their booth for, like, an hour. I mean, they didn't show up, seriously, until almost 10 o'clock, which is an hour after the hall opened, and, uh... People were just waiting around, like, what the fuck? Like, I, I got places to go. Like, what, 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 what's going on here? And it's like, did they sleep in or what? And um, anyway, that's a separate rant. Oh, and, and the guy who played Billy, the Blue Ranger, showed up, because I guess he was doing a signing later. He was the first one to show up at their booth. And all these angry scalpers in line don't know anything, and they thought he was a boom employee. So they're all yelling at this guy who played the Blue Ranger, hey man, what's going on here? Are you, are you gonna open up or what? What are you gonna do? And the guy who played Billy is like, calm down, calm down. I don't know. I don't know what this is. So anyway, uh, that was pretty funny. But, I had this thing happen in line that happens anytime, anytime I'm in line for an exclusive at Comic-Con. As I'm in line, the person in front of me will always be like, are you getting all the, are you getting, uh, are you getting all the exclusive? And I'll be like, no, I'm just getting one. Like, I'm just going to get the, the green psycho ranger. Okay. Buy me, uh, buy me two more green psycho rangers and buy me three, uh, three of the comic variants and buy me the, uh, like they tell me all these things to buy them because they're going to flip them. They're going to scalp them all on eBay. So yeah, buy me this, buy me this. And they always like assume you're going to do it. Yeah, um, just buy me four of the figures. Um, give me the other ones you're not going to get. Buy me uh, Captain um, Monster Balzac. Buy me uh, three of those. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm here because I like these things. I'm not here to flip anything. Uh, so, no, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm going to get my own thing. And then the dude told me, well, you got to get the comic. They have, a, they have a comic, a cover variant with Green Psycho Ranger on it. You have to get that for me. I was like, uh, why? And he's like, because they only printed 250 of them. Well, then it's like, and it's only five bucks? Well, I'm getting it for myself, so that's what I did. I got the comic. It was, this was five bucks. Um, I don't know if it's as rare as the dude said, but, I mean, you shouldn't have told me that if you wanted me to get one for you, because now I got one for myself. <laughs> anyway. All right. What else? Okay, so, oh, I got this figure of Oolong. It's a pig. Kind of see see kind of the resemblance. It's kind of what I was going for. Anyway. NECA blew it out of the water with their exclusives this year because they did something that a lot of people wanted for a long time. So we're going to kind of end on the big, the big quesadilla here. The big burrito. The, the large torta. Anyway. This isn't it, but we're going to get there. Uh, NECA did the, a lot of their exclusives this year. I skipped a few of them. I'm not the biggest Guillermo del Toro guy, so I didn't get that figure, whatever. But they did um, a figure of a, a, a very an obscure character in the original Predator, Rick Hawkins, who was played by Shane Black, 
who ironically is writing, I think writing and directing the new predator that's about to come out. Um, this guy made there, uh, there was a movie, the nice guys. I love that movie. Um, but I'm not super familiar with the rest of his stuff. And honestly, I don't really want to see the new predator. I don't care about any more predator movies, but this guy was great in the movie and they finally did a figure of him and it was uh, exclusive. So very cool. Okay, this thing a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. You've seen on my channel a long time ago, I got all the quarter scale Ninja Turtles. Well, it, it's a Comic-Con exclusive because I guess legally this is the only way they can release it. But they finally did a set of just six inch or seven inch, whatever scale, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the 1989 Jim Henson movie and it's in this awesome awesome uh vhs package which it's so funny when they handed it to me i was like "Ooh, can i get one without the like terror right here there's like a terror and there's some scratches and it's all there on purpose they made it the package is purposely kind of scuffed up and i don't know if it comes across on camera it's sun damaged like it's actually kind of faded out like the package it, it looks like everyone's vhs does right now uh which i love I, it also took me a little while to realize that they recreated all the photos on this class from this classic vhs package they recreated them all with the toys so all these things that were that used to be photos <laughs> they're, all the, they're all the figures oh man i love that but anyway uh good stuff they quoted uh, Pixel Dan and some other YouTube people, or I think some other YouTube people, I don't know what the foosh is, they quote the foosh, I just want to know when, when I want my quote on the next exclusive, put, put my, put these words put me doing this that's it, put, you know moi from Rocco from Mega64, that's what I say but anyway VHS package and look it slides out like the tape anyway, uh, you could see that right there I haven't, I haven't removed them yet, but um, the movie Turtles, I mean, how great of a job. They look amazing. Uh, everyone wanted these. You know, you could see more package st uh, photo stuff. Man! Mm! They did a great job with these. They look just like the movie. I mean, they're just as good as the, as the quarter scale ones that they did. Or whatever scale ones, those big ones were. They're, they did a great job. They look just as good as those, just smaller. That's it. So they did a, a great job. And then I did something real stupid. I did something real stupid. I got, oh man, the diorama. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie, diorama to put the figures on. This was another Comic-Con exclusive and it's heavy as hell. Uh, but it's like outside the news station where there's a fight, you know, like out in the streets and it's got a whole cityscape in the background. I don't know where, I don't know where the fuck I'm going to put this. I have no idea where I'm going to put this, but man, you know, I wasn't going to get it because I thought that's kind of a big diorama for just four turtles, but it was actually Frank that told me, he said, you know, you can put anything you want on that diorama. You can put... Michael Jackson doing Smooth Criminal. You can put... Weird Al with like a Super Saiyan aura around him. You could put... What else could you put? I don't know. Anything really. So I said, yes. Give me that diorama. So I want to say thank you to NECA for making this possible. Unbelievable. So that's it. That's where we're at. I'm just, I'm, I'm just having a moment right now. I'm just feeling emotional. This, this figure update was so powerful. Oh man. Maybe this should have been the last one. What do you think? Put in the comments. Should this be the last figure update? There's no top. I mean, there's no top in it. There's no top in it. Just no top in it. I don't know if I'm gonna cry or, or what, but it's unbelievable. 
unbelievable. 